Well, hello. You're watching Math Head. Let's do some math. All right. In this video, it's a part of the series Math of Finance and specifically the compound interest um, video portions. Okay, so compound interest with deposits. I previously did a video on just compound interest and how we derive the formula A equals P times one plus R to the amount of time, T. All right, and um, I'll link that video up in the up in the corner and in the description. But all of these videos deal with the, um, the specific topics that are relevant to everybody in finance, okay? If you're an investor, it's relevant. If you're someone who owns credit cards, it's relevant. And just anyone who's looking to get better at finance, better at understanding stuff, math is the way to do it. Math is the language of the universe, okay? So if you love math or you think you might like math after you watch my videos or you know, you're struggling with it and you wanna get better or X, Y, Z, if you wanna understand the world at a deeper level, you need to subscribe to Math Head, all right? So without further ado, let's devise and derive this formula. So we need assumptions to create uh, the formula appropriately. So the deposits are gonna be constant so like $300 per month and that's going to be $3,600 per year then we're going to assume that the interest is paid after all those deposits have uh, been added into your account and it's going to be before all the other deposits and then all the other deposits are going to go on so the A's are going to stand for uh, the year so at the end of the year how much money do you have and the um, the sequence of events is going to be you're going to deposit money every single month through the whole year at the end of the year then you're going to get paid on the interest on all those deposits okay so the first year you're depositing all your money we're calling it p like i said if it's 300 dollars a month doesn't matter 3600 dollars a year because the compound the interest is only going to be paid one time per year so the first year boom you have all that money then the start of the second year and you have that money plus the interest times that money all right and this is the whole second year so the whole first year you have this second year starts boom so the interest is going to be start of the second year you're paid like that plus all of the deposits you're going to make throughout that year because this is going to represent the whole year all right first year deposits second year deposits plus interest or, or your principal that you had plus interest times the principal plus more deposits all right that equals p times one plus r plus p because we pull out the common term p times one plus r you know if you multiply this back in you get p plus pr that is going to be the whole theme of this thing. So if you can see this right here, how P plus PR turns into P1 plus R, you're going to be good. All right. Third year, all the money we had plus interest on that plus all the deposits for that year. All right. So all the money we had P plus P times one plus R plus. Now we have to multiply that whole amount by the interest and then we're going to add all of our deposits in and that's going to be how much money we're going to have at the end of the uh, third year sorry this is two all right so that's going to equal p we're going to get our pr term so p plus pr equals p times and i'm just going to actually put this one there first so we'll cross that one out p distribute the r to this p P plus PR, boom, we get this. P times one plus R, same thing. These terms, now notice this. P times one plus R, P times one plus R. It's the same term, okay? So we can also remove that. When we have an R, we distribute it, we put them together, so I'll write it out real quick, but then this will be the last one I write out like this. Plus P times one plus R, and that's times R, all right? 
So what I did was I distributed it. And then once you do that, these parentheses go away because everything's been distributed and we get this. Now, if we pull out the P times one plus R from each of those terms, you get P times one plus R and then this becomes a one and then there's an R left. So times one plus R and that's it. That's the trick. Now we have P times one plus R squared instead of that, instead of writing that. All right, that's the same thing as what we just had. P times one plus R squared. So I will erase this. And if you can't see it yet, I'll do one more term. So now we're on the fourth year. All of what we had, P plus P times one plus R plus P times one plus R squared plus the interest on all of that. Now we know it's gonna be these whole terms multiplied by R. So I'm just gonna multiply R times all these three terms and rewrite it. PR plus P times one plus R to the R plus P times one plus R squared times R and then plus R deposit of P. Okay, do you see what I did there? I, I knew that all these terms were gonna be multiplied by R because that was going to be just like this. We're gonna multiply the rate of return times the previous balance we had, which is this, which is this right here. So instead of writing it out in parentheses, I just distribute it in my head. Okay, this is gonna get an R, this is gonna get R, this is gonna get an R to get all this, all right? So now, just like up here, same stuff, P and PR equals, and I'll first start with this, P, so we move that. This term P and PR equals P times one plus R. Boom, P and one plus R and P and one plus R with the R, we just saw it equals P times one plus R squared. P times one plus R squared. And then P times one plus R squared, P times one plus R squared with an R. Can you guess what it's gonna be? It's gonna be P times one plus R cubed. That's amazing. It's the same thing. If you don't believe me, work it out. What you have is a P times one plus R squared plus P R times one plus R. And it doesn't matter if you write the R here or the R here. It's P multiplied by R multiplied by one plus R. So you could write it on either side. But when you remove the P times one plus R squared, you get this term out and you get a one and you get plus R. See that? When you remove the P times one plus R squared. And that whole thing turns into P times one plus R cubed. Now that, that's the important thing that you see. Those little tricks are what make this thing possible. And now the next portion, it relies on a derivation and then a proof to solidify the derivation, which I'm not gonna show in this video, all right? But if we look right here and we pull out the common term, which is P, we get P times one plus one plus R plus one plus R squared plus one plus R cubed. That, I just removed a P from all those. All right, now this right here, is known as a geometric sum, okay? Where you have one plus one plus r to the one plus one plus r to the two plus one plus r to the three. And you can, it's commonly shown as this crazy e, which is just a summation notation, meaning, you know, there's a term here. It's gonna be a r to the n or r to the t, let's see, say. Well, to keep our notation consistent, t equals zero to some value k. k can be 200 or whatever. Those are the amount of years though, like right here. See, this, this was actually four years. See that? The first year we did all our deposits. Second year, we got paid interest and then we put all our deposits in there. Third year, interest on what we had plus all of our deposits at the end of the year. So these are at the end of the year is what we have, okay? So that's where this comes in. A is a common term. You can remove it outside of the sum. So you really just get A, R, T. 
And how this works is, okay, you start at whatever this says down here, and then you go up to whatever k is. So let's say k is equal to three, all right? So this would equal, I'm, I'm not gonna write the a. Actually, yeah, I'll write the a like this. And then r to the zero, that's the first one. Then r to the one, r to the two, r to the three. All right, what is r to the zero? It's just one. Now I hope you see that this is the same as this right here, where r can be anything. In our case, one plus r is what r equals. If r is 0.05, we have 1.05, so r is 1.05, okay? And then we get a, um, we can't have this sequence go to infinity though, if we want it to be the formula that we see right here. It has to be a finite sequence. I'll explain in another video why that is, but for now, if you just realize that this, the A is actually the P, and this is really this. Now, also, as I said, this whole thing, someone devised a great, awesome, tricky way, like all of math, to add this up without adding it all up. They made a formula that you could add it all up. So if K equal 200, you would have to write out R3, R4, R5, blah, 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 R200, add all that up. That's so time consuming. No one wants to do that. So some really smart person, like I said, I'm not gonna do it and show it in this video, but once I make it, there will be a link in this video for it. This whole thing right here equals A times one minus R, since we use T, T plus one over, one minus R, that. And if you look at that, that is this, where A is P, one minus, the R term is one plus R, see, the, this is R, this is R. I know multiple R's are confusing, but I hope you see that, one minus R, so it's one minus one plus R. This is this. That's where that comes from. I hope that was clear. I tried to be as concise and quick as possible. I know long math videos can be tedious, but once you see this, you know, it, math starts becoming really fun. And I hope that you're so interested in this, you wanna subscribe to the channel and learn all about math and see why this sum equals this right here. All right, so look for that video, subscribe to the channel, Click the notification button. I think it allows you to see my videos. Uh, it pops up in your messages. So other than that though, that's it. That's another video down for the math of finance compound interest with deposits. All right, have a great day.